What's up you guys, it's your boy Hayden Huen, back with another video and today if you've read the title or the thumbnail correctly, it's completely right. The fans are doing obviously the best work. Now I've been a fan of MJ since 2009 which is obviously a tragic year and just by being a fan post death the way how the estate is just handling mostly all of the stuff it's just basically one big garbage fire like if you see all the other estates of the classic artists that have passed away such as you know Prince, David Bowie, Queen etc you can see that they're always constantly remastering new content digitizing and scanning old tapes and videos and creating new albums and box sets for fans to enjoy and michael jackson fans what do we get A compilation album at its finest it's like no pun intended does the estate really care about us? Now I've made a previous video in the past where I basically blasted the estate with their frequently asked questions panel on their website. If you haven't checked it out, links will be down in the description below. It's an old and different video in the way how I present the information, but all in all, my thoughts are still the same. And being a frequent Instagram user who also is the MJ fandom on there, I can tell you that fans do the best work full stop when comparing to them versus the estate. Now, what do I mean by this? I've wrote down a couple of points where I'm actually going to compare the points that fans are doing to what the estate's doing and basically I'll show you what the qualitative difference of it is. So the first one is posting high quality pictures of Michael Jackson. You know, that should just be a given. If you look on the Michael Jackson estate's Instagram page, you can see that those image qualities are just subpar and it's always Getty images, which is really weird because Getty images, you just pay for a life. For already commercial use images, they are just basically doing the bare minimum. But if you compare it to other fan accounts, you can see that they have a high quality images and in which sometimes they basically remaster it, you know, they edit the highlights, they edit the shadows, they do blemish removal, all that stuff. And all in all, it's just a better experience for the person who's looking at it on Instagram. If you look at the MJ Estates Instagram page, you can see that they're just the generic images that they've been using for probably a decade and they're not giving us new images. But if you look at MJ fans, it's literally not their job to preserve MJ's legacy. They just do it out there their simple interests and they're doing a better job to the MJ estate. Some people even do restorations where it's a black and white picture but they managed to put in some more color into it and I think that it's a really fantastic initiative. Furthermore as fans we are not getting Michael Jackson content. Whether it comes to new albums or new concerts we're simply not getting it. Michael Jackson arguably the biggest selling album artist of all time quote unquote according to Sony who has proven to have a lot of demos a lot of work in progress and a lot of unreleased songs which are literally sitting on Sony hard drives. Now I get it, as a Michael Jackson purist, some people like their songs finished, but look at what they've done with the Michael album and the Escape album. They've sometimes recontemporized songs or they just even put the original versions on for fans to hear. The last proper album that we had in terms of original new Michael Jackson content was back in 2014 with Escape. And then before Escape, it was in 2011 with the Michael album. And as we all know, it had controversy with those pesky Casio tracks. Now, what is my point exactly? Well, Michael Jackson fans, we often rely on new content when it comes to leaks and crowdfunding. Now with leaks, it's a bit controversial because yes, it is new content, but we don't know where this new content has sourced from. Some of it could be from an illegal distribution service or some of them were from private collectors that have it on VHS, tapes or records. And with new leaks, Sony has a hard crackdown on the copyright strike and they basically just remove some songs in its entirely. From my knowledge, the most recent leak was the Bad World to a Los Angeles soundboard tape, in which was the soundboard audio from the mixing desk of the last Bad World to a show. Prior to that leak, the only material that we had of that last show was just a 15 minute compile from a news station. As you can see that gaining new content full stop is hard enough but when the fans give the extra mile it's also hard because we actually don't know where these are actually sourced from and it's really hard to actually just get the traction to get these materials from. 
Even for old stuff, such as concerts and music videos, if you look at the Moonwalker Blu-ray, that's actually been ripped from 35mm film. 35mm film is the equivalent of a 4K quality, and if you compare it from the Moonwalker Master to, for example, the Michael Jackson Visions music video, there's a huge stark contrast to it. Even if you look at both Spike Lee's documentaries on Bad 25 and Off The Wall, you can see that he's remastered some snippets of the concerts, and even tapes, and even just old photographs. Look at this snippet for another part of me. This is the most clearest we've ever seen the bad tour. Even in Moonwalk when we have snippets of Man in the Mirror and just other stuff, it just looks like fantastic quality. In the Off The Wall documentary, we've never seen so much high definition footage of Michael Jackson and his brothers performing in the Destiny and Triumph tour. The DVD box set, Michael Jackson's Visions, they weren't even in high def when they even mastered it. But the way how it was shot, it was with big cameras and that it was definitely probably a high quality scan, but apparently they had a lot of formatting issues for that box set. But for previous DVDs such as, you know, the, the History on Film, as well as the Dangerous Short Films, they're actually much more high quality than the Michael Jackson Vision quality, which is quite bizarre. Is it laziness? I don't know. Is it a lack of care? I don't know. For example, even for the commercially released Wembley concert, that's not even the proper master. That was Michael Jackson's personal VHS copy of the show as the original master. It had so many issues and you know, and long story short, the estate didn't give a shit about how they formatted it. Us Michael Jackson fans, we've probably never even got a single new content in probably the last five years. Officially released that is. With a lot of leaks and crowdfundings, we've been getting a lot of new concerts, even just little short snippets of demos or just new songs. But The Estate, the last album they produced was just simply a compilation album with two remixes. And this leads to my next point in which you can argue, yes, there is new content. It's just reproductions and repressings of the initial albums, which is just really lame. Like seriously, who wants to have Thriller, Off The Wall, Dangerous on a picture disc? Who asked? Who just wants the same old songs in just a new CD and just, and just call it the 2016 version? Not me. Who asked for just a compilation of just B-side tracks into a Halloween album and just release it as a new album? Not me. With these quote unquote new pressings of albums or just even compilations, no one asks, we just want new content. Even if you look at Escape in 2014, you can see that they released the original versions, the recontemporized version, they had a controversial hologram performance that had a lot of production quality and promotion to it, and that's probably one of the best two new albums that has released after Michael Jackson's death. The best arguably in terms of new album is Bad 25. You got the re-release of the Bad album. You got a lot of demos. You even got this really cool suitcase. And to top it all off, you got a new concert. I know for a fact on eBay that there's a bootleg suitcase with around 52 CDs and DVDs of Michael Jackson content, which is unofficial, but it's around 300 bucks. And I say it's worth your money. Although you can actually just find the content on YouTube, having it in a physical format in this really nice suitcase with a lot of sleeves, the MJ set cannot afford to do that. Like seriously, they're like, oh, that's too much work. But for a fan, they just literally just cobble it together. And what they're doing is they're spreading MJ's legacy and putting it in a nice fan merchandise. Which leads me on to my next point is, the estate doesn't listen to the fans. When do we get a Dangerous 25? When did we get a History 25? Yes, I know you can probably argue that Dangerous 25, they just literally re-uploaded the short films and just did a little bit of postings. And History 25, they did some really questionable merch, but there wasn't any commemorative post saying that History 25, here is a repressing of the album, plus some bonuses that you've never before seen before. Even to this day, you get fans commenting on the MJ Instagram post saying that, you know, where's Dangerous 25? Where's History 25? We just even want the music videos in high definition. Because if you look on YouTube, they're 480 rips, and to get a better high quality rip, you can just probably get it off a DVD. Which leads me on to my next point, which is the estate makes really crappy merchandise. Now look, have you looked at their Michael Jackson store, for example? Who asked for this? And why is it so expensive? Like, I don't want a tote bag. I don't want these poorly designed merchandise clothing that, you know, some eight year old did on Photoshop. It could be different for the Michael Jackson Las Vegas show that Circus du Soleil has done where it has like official Michael Jackson merch with the decor and all that stuff. But just looking at the website alone, like who wanted this? And the fact is it's only in euros or in US dollars in which hinders international buyers, but you also got to pay shipping, which is like 50 to 100 bucks. I'm paying so much for this merchandise already. Why do I have to pay shipping that costs an arm and a leg? 
And that, I'm just looking at my notes at the moment. And overall, I've spent 116 and 75 cents Australian dollars on this hoodie. Michael Jackson fan and seeing the estates of popular dead artists, you know, such as Queen, Prince, David Bowie, they're always frequently releasing new stuff in which puts the Michael Jackson estate to shame. A lot of our Michael Jackson fans, we have to buy our stuff which is pre-owned, vintage or reproduction. There is no new content anymore. This is why I get so jealous of modern fandoms is because, you know, they have all these access to, you know, new content, their artists being alive as well. But their estate or their company puts so much effort into the promotion and into the product in which they are selling with the artists. An example would be K-pop in which, you know, has the album and then has some awesome, you know, postcards, stickers and notebooks and all this stuff. And that comes with the album. It's not an extra add-on. And then the Michael Jackson estate is like, yeah, here's a CD. That's it close up shop. It's like, I wish we had more. What I find sad is that a 14 year old who has 8,000 followers who runs a fan page can do it better than the official estate. So if any member of the MJ estate is watching this, look, my voice is one out of the many in the Michael Jackson community on Instagram or even on YouTube who just wants to say, you're doing a really bad job. The fans, we are trying to push for new content. We're trying to share the legacy of MJ, but you're hindering us. We're relying on new leaks, crowdfunding, or just weird ways of just getting new content to us, whether it be an hour, two hours, or even just, you know, 30 seconds. It's really disappointing that us fans are doing the extra mile to doing something that you should be doing on your own. The MJ estate asks yourself this, are you really sustaining MJ's legacy? Or are you the other people in MJ's life in which you're basically being the same dead horse for, you know, years upon years just to get money and just to do the bare minimum? Like I've said, the fans are doing the best work and it's just really disappointing to see that the official MJ estate is doing nothing about it. Well, those are just a selection of my thoughts, maybe your thoughts. If you have any other thoughts, leave it down in the comments below and I will reply to them. Hope you enjoy liking and subscribe. See you next video. Catch you around.